Welcome to Final 30 TV. This week will feature a discussion on the merits and demerits of Germany's 50 plus 1 rule. Palmer. Hello. Hello. Just for those who don't know, the 50 plus 1 rule being that fans have to own 51% of the club. Uh, there have been a couple of exceptions of late, so we're going to run through the merits and demerits and we'll see. So, Rob, to start with, what are the merits of the 50 plus 1 rule? Well, for me, the merits of it is that the fact that the fans will always have a majority stake in the club. So, if, like, <clears throat> for example, let's talk about later on, if Red Bull come in and they buy, a lot, like, they buy like, basically a club and then install, like, sort of, specific members yes, in the place yes. that they want they they can actually have a say about like ticket prices um, like even minor changes about the club like even if they want to like know, install something new in the training yeah. if they have, have flags in the ground which isn't allowed in a lot of Premier League stadiums. exactly exactly yeah. all that kind of good stuff all, like the, all the stuff that basically the modern fan wants they can actually have a say in the yeah. club rather than the, like a club is going to say right you can't do this anymore you have no say because you're a fan say about it all you want on Twitter it doesn't matter we make the final decision whereas fans in Germany, can actually have a proper active role in the development of our club. Like. Yeah, even even at a club like Bayern Munich, their members yeah, are exactly. very sure important. They, sure. What was it? We read the piece that you linked to me in the Guardian, yeah. and they felt like, what is it, 264,000 members? Mental. Like. Yeah, who all have a say, all have a vote. And this is this is obviously really important for, for the running of the club, because if you if fans want a certain thing done, they can have, like you say, they can have that influence. Mm. What would you say then are the demerits of the system? Because it's quite a parochial, local system to use. It's great when all your fans come from West Fade. That's yeah. perfect, but it's obviously not due to the modern game, and, and there are drawbacks to it. Like I think the demerits of it is, again, it's it's sort of it's it's a weird sort of paradox that the demerits of it are sort of akin to the positive things about yeah. it. I mean, it's yeah. like it's like I think I think sometimes the fans can hold a club back in terms of like let's say a club wants to go out and market the club in a different way, like they yeah. want to I don't know like change the shade of red, like for example, let's say Bayern, if they want to change the shade of red in the kit or something, the fans just go no. The red is our, like I don't know why you'd want to change the shade of red, yeah, but you know yeah. what I mean. It's yeah. like similar sort of little things like that that like that might like produce a market I don't know Asia or something yeah. or something like that. And also then that someone can come in with millions and millions of pounds or euros and make the changes in the club that a, that a shake or whatever would. Exactly, like it's 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 a it's a it's a good system to have in place because as you said, it keeps the club as a f- like it keeps the club the way the fans want it but at the same time if you're part of a club who aren't like aren't as big as a buyer and like let's say like they're mid-table or something the club won't exactly be able to progress because all the fans want to keep it same all the same all because that's what yeah. they've always had and they don't want to change anything yeah like I mean obviously like that's not going to be the case all the time like they're not going to flat out refuse every sort of progressive idea that <laughs> happens but I mean just keep shooting it down it, it, yeah. do, it does it does give them that option that if they want to change something and if it like has worked in like, I don't know England or somewhere mm. and someone has just come in and said right this is it and all the fans have just said no this isn't what's going to happen but they do it anyway and it works in Germany then it doesn't have that chance if they don't like it it's just flat out no yeah. it's not going to happen and then with the exceptions to the 50 plus 1 rule we have Hoffenheim who don't play in the village they come from you know backed by a millionaire you have yeah. Wolfsburg backed by Volkswagen and then you've got Bayer who are Bayer Leipzig are backed by the pharmaceutical company Bayer Red Bull Leipzig is another story altogether. They're taking over the traditional clubs in terms of the position of the club. I mean, Hamburg are, are all but relegated for the first time ever, which is unthinkable. You think about Kevin Keegan played for Hamburg back in the day and all that kind of stuff. This is obviously one of the drawbacks that Hamburg can't compete. Hanover can't compete. Stuttgart can't compete. So, basically, what I'm trying to say is do you think there'll be a system whereby they'll change it, that you won't have to do it anymore? Because you're going to lose all the biggest clubs in Germany. You're going to eventually go down the the proverbial shitter. Like. I do think they're going to change it, but I don't think they're going to change it to protect the old clubs. I think yeah. they'll change it to sort of stifle the new clubs, yeah. if you know what I mean. Like yeah. I think they'll, they'll change the rule to sort of not let Rebel Leipzig have as much, like because I think their their goal is, they were, when Rebel came in, I should say, they were in the fifth tier of German football and their goal was to be in the Bundesliga within five years or three or five years, something like that. Anyway, yeah. Crazy. And then they want to be in the Champions League when they get to the Bundesliga as well. Like it's ambitious as fuck. Yeah, boy. yeah. Like, I mean, to be honest, like, Red Bull have history of doing, like, to be honest, when they take, when they put their minds to something sporting, they tend to do it quite well. Like, I mean, look at the F1 team, they were shit when they came in and now, yeah. four time world champions. They have got the money, like, and they they've got the drive, but they also have a really good way of empowering people in the club. Anyway, they're the exception. Red Bull are quite evil in terms of Leipzig, what they've done, because they've kind of subverted the rules. 
So yeah, they, they haven't have, played by the 50 plus 1 rules. They, well, they have, but they've changed. Yeah, they have, but they've sort of played by the rules in the same way a politician yeah, plays like, by the truth. What, have the club's it's, got nine members? I think, I think it's 11. It's 11 yeah. members. They've got 11. <laughs> like, the fifth, like, All directors of the Red Bull. Another thing was, it was like, um, like for Bayern, a membership costs, I think it was 80 euro a year yeah. or something like this. For Red Bull Leipzig, it costs 800 euro a year and plus 100 euro first time registration fee. So you have to pay 900 quid to get your membership for yeah. a year. Pay 100 quid on top of it. Yeah, 900 quid for your first year and then pay 800 quid every year after that. Bearing in mind that the club are in the fifth year when they when they Yeah, exactly. Them, so. And then there's, they've got another thing where they can, um, like Red Bull can just kind of go, no, 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 I don't want you to be part of this club. Mm. You can, no, you don't work for Red Bull. You're not going to be part of this club. Up, yeah, yeah so. it's, 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 yeah. It's, it's sort of, it's basically, all right, yeah, we own 50% of the club. Well, well it's like, I think it's 49% of the club they actually own. And then um, the other 51% is like, We'll fill it with board members. You yeah. can buy things. It's, People it's, who want the Red Bull. So they just own the whole club, basically. Like. So you think the long term then we'll see a shift where the 50 plus 1 rule probably be consigned to the past? And yeah, I think so. You probably see Unfortunately, it's because it's a, it's, a, it's a great part. I think it's a yeah. great rule. I think it's like it's a good part. Like As, it, as we've discussed, it has its good parts and it's got its bad parts. Yeah. I kind of like yeah. how the clubs are kept to be fans. And like you've seen... Like, German football is wonderful when you look at it on the TV, like the amount of people that have to be off stadiums. They refuse to do midweek fixtures next season. They had a couple of them in the Bundesliga this season because families can't make it. Mm. And look at that, like, I mean, you look at Monday Night Football, while it's brilliant for the viewer at home. Well for the Premier League. Yeah, up, like, yeah. I mean, you look at that at home and you're like, oh, great, you sit down yeah. and have a curry or whatever. Yeah. Not great if you're driving. Well, it's not great if you actually yeah. live in the place and you want to actually go and watch your team. It's so you will lose something if the 50 plus 1 real goes in that way. It won't be local anymore, it won't be parochial for It'll people. It'll be global, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and it will suit people. And Bundesliga is going to be broadcast in America next season, so it'll be interesting to see if maybe that's another push in the direction of that, that we kind of fear, I guess, is coming from this video. So that's our take on Germany's 50 plus 1 rule, but what do you think? Is it something that should be protected or something that should be changed in terms of competitiveness in the overall league? Like and share, have your say in the comments section below. Uh, subscribe to Final Tour TV and follow us on Twitter at the final underscore third. Thanks for watching.